Today was the day. There was only one store in my city that did the upgrade. The attached doctor's office looked almost like any other doctor's office, but just a little slicker. All white, down to the computer cords. And of course, all the same type of computer. The anaesthetist talked me through the procedure. She told me about the gas and the injections and the monitors and the implant itself and how it was all so easy and I would be set to go the same day. Her bright smile flickered like an old tungsten light when she noticed my foot tapping and my hands ringing. You know, this is the last time you're going to be doing that, she said, her smile returning, warmer now. Doing what? Fidgeting, worrying. Our implant will help you take all those worries and just let them go, like balloons into the air. That's the idea, right? I gave her a nervous smile. That's the guarantee. We've tested it thoroughly. That's what I was told. Well, for now, I can give you a little something to calm your nerves. Is it safe? How much does it cost? Trust me, it's going to be a very small price to pay to lose your worries. I guess that's the idea. The rest of the operation came in like a fog. I remember the mask she put on me. I remember getting the giggles before I passed out on the stretcher. Then I was awake in a car telling the driver where I lived. The fog finally lifted when I got home and sat down with a cup of tea at my desk. Should I really work right after having an operation? They said it was fine. They're professionals. I suppose, but... I found myself relax a little. What was I thinking? Oh, I should get to work. The day went by smoothly, even smoother than before. My numbers were up. I was moving through jobs faster than I would on my best day. Anytime I would start to second guess myself, that doubt popped like a little bubble before it really even formed. This is great. I've already made my budget for the day. I could stop and relax. But what about saving money? I should get back to work, just for a little. I ended up working another four hours. I wanted to stop a couple of times, but then I would think about rent and the future and my mother and what was another few hours anyway. Small price to pay to lose your worries. I sat down on the couch after work and pulled up my news feed. Headlines popped out at me that I would normally click on, but instead, I closed the tab. What's the point in getting all worked up? Why let the world get you down? I scrolled through TV shows. I ended up watching reruns of sitcoms I'd already seen. I knew they were good, and I want to relax. After a few episodes, I began to worry I was getting lazy. But, before I could really worry about it, I shut off the screen again and picked up a book. I'd been meaning to finish this one for a while now. As I picked up the thread of the story, I remembered what had been happening. It was a very politically charged plot, and a flood of remembered anxiety threatened to rush back in. I put the book down. Who needs that stress? I was bored. I went back online to see if anyone I knew was around to chat. I scrolled through the list of names. People I've known for years or decades. Friends and family and co-workers. No one felt right. I've argued with all these people at different points. Suddenly... I felt a cold knife of fear. What was happening to me? 
you should go online and look at the support page. This is probably normal. Sure enough, the support page had all kinds of information for me. There was supposed to be an adjustment process. I had read that before, but it seemed less important at the time. I was so worried about the implant operation itself, the medications, missing work. Now, I read through it more carefully. Some customers experience the concern that the implant is changing their personality or personal identity. This is true to the extent that we are reshaping you into your best self. This means that old habits that caused you unnecessary stress or overly emotional states will be discouraged. Habits that increase your joy and sense of safety will be encouraged. Who decided what to encourage and what to discourage? Experts. They researched this fully to be sure. But what if they decided to discourage certain things and not others? Well, like what, silly? They want happy customers. So what if... I blinked hard. Something really important was happening. I was thinking of something really important. What could you be thinking about in front of your computer at this time of night? Maybe you need something for tomorrow. I suppose I'm getting low on groceries. I could put in an order for the morning. I turned off the computer, brushed my teeth, then went back to my bookshelf. I scanned all the titles, but nothing felt right. I sat down in bed with my tablet and logged into the library. But that didn't feel right either. It felt musty and old and... That's silly. I'm online. Why not go to Amazon though? They have better titles. I looked at the bestseller list. I noticed that the numbers were higher than they usually were for the top 10. I guess more people are reading these days. The same titles. They must be very good books. I scrolled through my saved list. There were a few non-fiction works I wanted to read. Economics, politics, science. But they felt dry. And what if the people who wrote them were wrong? I picked the number one bestseller. It was on sale. Small price to pay to lose your worries. I read through the whole thing without noticing the time go by. As I finally set my tablet down, I stared at the numbers on the clock. I should have been asleep hours ago. Take a pill. You'll be out before you know it. But what if... It's fine. Lots of people use them. I don't like this. Maybe you should write for a bit then. I grabbed my tablet again and started tapping away. I recounted my day, falling back into my old rhythm of journaling. The little bubbles of worry came up, but writing had always been a way to calm down and pop them myself. So I just wrote and wrote and didn't slow my fingers or reread what I had written until I had written it all out. And there on the page, if I looked out of the side of my eyes, but not directly, was a plea for help from a part of me that was being cornered and slowly flayed piece by piece. I realized I had just highlighted something and erased it. What was it? Probably just junk, no need to worry. I got up and started pacing. Why are you doing that? You should go to bed. You have work tomorrow. I know, I know. But something doesn't feel right. Something has been out of reach all day, and when I grab it, it slips away, 
I just want to hold it. It's probably not important. Well, it doesn't feel that way. Calm down. Get yourself a glass of warm milk. I sat down at my computer with my cup. I let myself type in the search bar without thinking too hard and just let my fingers go without looking and hit enter. Implant personality help. Happy customer. No worries. No problem. No person. Sat there when I looked up. What could that possibly mean? It's garbage. You should get to bed. I looked at the search results. Most were purple links from the support pages I had been looking at earlier. I hit a custom key I had created a while back to sort my results around Google's recommendations. They were quite different. Some people were saying the implant was dangerous. They must be crazy. Some were saying he was controlling them. That's just paranoid. Some were saying it was erasing part of who they were. The bad parts, that's the point. I felt like I was cornered between an invisible bear and lion. On one side of me was the worry that I was losing a part of myself. And the other was the worry that I was being paranoid. If I tried to think of one too much, I'd lose it. I had to think of both of them. Let them tug me side to side and threaten to tear me apart so that I could keep hold of them. The worry of losing the thought started to tug it back if the worry the thought caused was threatening it. I have to be calm about this. Rational. But you're so tired. Go to bed. Sleep on it. You'll feel better in the morning. The thought of sleeping with the implant worried me too. Well, look it up. The implant does its best work at night. When it has the optimal access to your subconscious, any adjustments that need to be made will be optimized as you sleep. Many customers who have initial difficulty find they have no issue after 8 hours of uninterrupted rest. If necessary, sleeping aids can be used to facilitate this process. Customers will find only one or two nights immediately after implantation may be necessary to enjoy optimal performance. Optimal performance. Happy customers. You should go to bed. Or maybe I should cut this thing out. And that's insane. You're not a doctor. But I'm losing something important. Do you really know it's important? If you sleep, you'll wake up happier. You'll see that this wasn't ever really important at all. But what if it is? Even if it is, it's a very small price to pay to lose your worries. I let my fingers hit the search bar again, typing implant self-removal in a blur. I hit enter and the results came back from the support page, full of warnings and offers to speak to a technician. I hit my custom key and the sorted results had a few bloggers talking about how you can't remove the implant yourself. Of course not. That would be dangerous. But you could disable it by erasing the data with a decoser. Well, that's crazy. Where would you even get one? Online. Amazon has them. Can you get it in time? It's expensive. You'll need to sleep sometime. Can you stay up that long? I'll order it anyway. I need more coffee. That much caffeine is bad for you. Go to sleep. You'll feel better. But I could lose myself in the night. I could... 
I cut the thought off from myself before I could let it form. If I thought about what I needed to do next, I would worry about what it would do to me, and then I never do it. The bottle of dexedrine was empty in one hand, and an empty glass of water was in the other, before I let myself think about what I'd done. How many pills were left in that bottle? Doesn't matter now. You could be killing yourself, just to stay awake. A small price to pay, to lose my worries. Now, I just have to stay up and wait.